don't buckle up. U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 2. On the constitution.congress.gov website, they break this section up into five clauses. So I'm going to sort of do the same. Each clause is a paragraph, so we'll take a look at the whole thing and then move into each clause right after. All right. Now that I'm prepared, let's go. Complete text. The House of Representatives shall be composed of members chosen every second year by the people of the several states, and the electors in each state shall have the qualifications requisite for electors of the most numerous branch of the state legislature. No person shall be a representative who shall not have attained to the age of 25 years and been seven years a citizen of the United States, and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state in which he shall be chosen. Representatives in direct taxes shall be apportioned amongst the several states which may be included within this union according to their respective numbers, which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons, including those bound to service for a term of years, and excluding Indians not taxed three-fifths of all other persons. The actual enumeration shall be made within three years after the first meeting of the Congress of the United States and within every subsequent term of ten years in such manner as they shall by law direct. The number of representatives shall not exceed one for every 30,000, but each state shall have at least one representative, and until such enumeration shall be made, the state of New Hampshire shall be entitled to choose three, Massachusetts eight, Rhode Island and Providence Plantation one, Connecticut five, New York six, New Jersey four, Pennsylvania eight, Delaware one, Maryland six, Virginia ten, North Carolina 5, South Carolina 5, and Georgia 3. When vacancies happen in the representation from any state, the executive authority thereof shall issue writs of election to fill such vacancies. The House of Representatives shall choose their speaker and other officers and shall have the sole power of impeachment. Clause 1 This is basically setting down how the Congress gets elected or at least how much the founders wanted the federal government to be involved in that process. Each state chooses their electors and there's going to be some qualifications they need to have to be elected. Over the years, it's been determined that this section, and this clause in particular, was unalterable by the legislation. It's generally agreed that this would mean that House and Congress members are voted in by an equal population vote for each, and that as much as is achievable, each person's vote would matter somewhere around what any other person's vote would. And all of Congress was voted in mostly by full population votes. There were some stipulations about that because not everyone's vote was equal or even allowed at the time, but districting wasn't how we started. Then districting kicked off and was mostly kept out of the courts until around the 1930s when the amount of voter complaints were too much to ignore. Districting has its own issues with gerrymandering and has been agreed actually to be problematic by the Supreme Court, though they stated since they couldn't agree on a single measure to determine when partisan gerrymandering was unconstitutional, they'd essentially stay out of it. Clause 2 All of this is putting in requirements, exclusions on who can be or can't be an elected official, and how many to start off with. What's most interesting here is what's not said. Over the centuries, there's been variations on this, from states being able to exclude certain people for the simple reason of not agreeing with their politics, to the more clear problems of states creating their own extended rule set to make it unlikely, if not impossible, for whole demographics of people from being able to be a member of Congress. It's now mostly been settled that legislatures, state or federal, can't add to these requirements in order to maximize the ability of the people in determining who represents them. Clause 3. This section is long, and its summary is about counting people to determine numbers in the House of Representatives. Look at the text. You should know that slaves counted as the three-fifths of a person, all while being unable to vote, and this was included as a compromise for states with low amounts of citizens but high amounts of slaves. This has thankfully been changed but with its original reading would definitely go against our more modern mantra of one person, one vote, that even the framers seem to support ideologically, just not in practice. 
What remains from this clause is the way the spread of House of Representatives are determined across the country and the power of census that's provided to the government in order to determine that. Yep, the census comes from this portion of the Constitution. Clause 4. Super quick and easy. This is just saying that if there's a vacancy, then you gotta elect someone to fill in the space. You don't wait till the next standard election, you do it now. There were some early back and forths on whether or not resignations counted to trigger this clause, but it was agreed that it does from other areas of the Constitution referencing Senate resignations. Clause 5. So, you start with the House choosing their own Speaker and other officers, pretty straightforward, to they are the ones who can start the whole impeachment process. There's a long history on how the punishments were decided, but basically this was in response to the crown being considered beyond the law's reach. This style of impeachment was put into the Constitution so that our president wasn't also beyond the law. This is a piece of that checks and balances people always talk about with the Constitution. And as of 2021, the House has impeached 15 federal judges, one senator, one cabinet member, and three presidents. Since the House has sole power of impeachment, they of course determine everything about it, and when to let someone slide or when to start the impeachment process for otherwise less important reasons. There's not really a check on them for this. Phew, that's it, really. Article 1, Section 2. And as always, check out other sources for more in-depth information. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.